Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome in the renewed 2024 Volkswagen ID4. This car has gotten a major update, not a visual update, the car still looks the same. However, the car has gotten a major technical update because Volkswagen has decided to take the drivetrain from the Volkswagen ID7 and put it in the ID4. And the drivetrain from the ID7 is a pretty good drivetrain, meaning that this ID4 now has more performance and a better range. Let's get into it. Now the battery pack is still identical to that of the outgoing model. It is a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack, although you can also still get the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack as well. And if you go for the ID4 with the smaller battery pack, you're not getting the updates that this bigger battery pack version has received. So I would advise to always go for the version with the bigger battery pack if you can spend the money, because otherwise you're missing out on a couple of very good updates that this bigger battery pack version has received. So let's talk about the bigger battery pack version. Now the battery pack is identical to that of the outgoing model. However, the electric motor is, well, not completely different, but it is a bit different. It is the electric motor from the ID7, which is basically the same electric motor from the ID4, but it is more developed. It is way more efficient because it has a completely different inverter and also different cooling. It has different water and oil cooling. And because of that, the electric motor is way powerful and way more efficient than the electric motor on the outgoing model of the ID4. And as a result, this new version has gotten a major power bump up to 80 horsepower because the outgoing model only has 204 horsepower, which is not a lot in a really big and heavy SUV. But now the ID4 with the bigger battery pack has a standard 286 horsepower, which again is a power bump of 80 horsepower. And you can really tell because also the torque has increased dramatically. It went up from 310 Newton meters up to 545 Newton meters which again is also a pretty big bump. And you can really tell because the ID4 now actually feels pretty fast. And before the car felt adequately fast, it did zero to 100 kilometers an hour in around eight and a half seconds, which is fine. It's not super slow, but for an electric car, it is pretty slow. And even for a regular car nowadays, it is not considered really fast. But now, like I said, you got way more power and this car will do zero to 100 kilometers an hour in around six and a half seconds, which is still not lightning fast. There are still plenty of cars in this segment that are way faster, especially if you go for the performance versions of the Ioniq 5, the Ioniq 5N or the EV6 GT or the performance version of the Tesla Model Y. But even then, six and a half seconds is pretty fast in my book. If you consider six and a half seconds to be slow, you're probably ruined by other electric cars. And for now, for the first time ever, the ID4 is fun to drive, but it also makes the car a lot more comfortable because you don't have to put in much effort to get the car going. Now the exterior design, like I said, really hasn't changed. You still get the same exterior design. You still get the same boot capacity of around 550 liters, which is still plenty. Backseat area is still very spacious as well, even for larger adults. The interior did change. You get a new steering wheel, you get a new digital gauge cluster, and you get a new infotainment system. The digital gauge cluster has a new interface. It's a little bit more simple, and the gear selector has been moved and is completely different because before you had the gear selector that was stuck next to the digital gauge cluster, but now you get a regular gear selector stock next to the steering column. The steering wheel has a different layout as well and you get new materials on the steering wheel. You get this new fig leather on the steering wheel. Now the infotainment system is the biggest update here in the interior and one of the biggest updates on this new ID4 because the infotainment system is a lot bigger. This is also the same infotainment screen that you get in the ID7, but also in the new Skoda Enyaq. And I recently drove the new Enyaq as well, which is pretty much the same car as this technical wise, but it looks completely different and the interior looks a lot better. And if you want to see my video on the renewed 2024 Skoda Enyaq, look for the link in the description box down here below. But let's focus again on the infotainment system. The screen is a lot bigger because on the outgoing model, you could only get a 10 inch screen and now you get this 13 inch screen and the software is way better. Now this car has gotten a couple of updates the past couple of years because in the beginning, the software was terrible. I'm sure you heard about this because the ID4, when it was launched, the software was pretty poor and there was not enough compute power making the system shut down on a regular basis. Now that is not happening anymore. I haven't had a shutdown incident with this car for the entire week I'm driving it. And I'm pretty sure that's now a thing of the past because you now got way more compute power and this is now a very nice system to use. Now the sliders are still here. And by the sliders, I mean this plastic trim on the edge of the screen. 
and you have to slide your finger across the sliders to adjust the temperature or the volume. Now I'm sure you probably heard this as well, nobody's a big fan of the sliders and neither am I, but they did improve the sliders a little bit by integrating some lights in the sliders, so at night you can finally see what you're doing when you're adjusting the sliders, but this is still a pretty poor way to adjust the temperature. And again, if you look in the Skoda Enyaq, which is pretty much the same car as this, you get physical buttons to adjust the temperature and the volume and a whole lot of stuff. And I really prefer the physical dials in the Enyaq over the sliders in this ID4. And the materials in the ID4 are also pretty much untouched. So you still get a lot of hard plastic, which I'm also not a big fan of. You get plastic in the door panels and also here on the dashboards. Now I'm pretty sure you're not gonna boink and hit the dashboards all day when you're sitting in a car, but you can really see the hard plastics. And that is a little bit annoying when you're spending like 45 or 50 grand on a car like this. What is also new here in the interior is the new audio system from Harman Kardon, which is an optional audio system, and it is actually an excellent infotainment system. What I also really like on the ID4 is the massive panoramic roof that you can get. And I think especially if you got people in the back on a regular basis, they would really appreciate if you go for the panoramic roof. Now the driving dynamics really haven't changed compared to the outgoing model because the suspension setup is still identical. You can still get the DCC option on this car, so the dynamic chassis control, so you get adaptive suspension on this car. This particular version has it. This is the pro version with the adaptive suspension. And you can choose from different modes. So there's eco modes, there's traction modes, there's sport modes, and there's comfort modes. Now on a day-to-day -day basis, you will probably use the comfort modes because the sport mode is actually pretty harsh, especially if you have to go over speed bumps on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't want to have this car in sport modes, but if you like to have some fun nowadays, you could use the sport modes to actually have some fun because the sport modes does stiffen up the suspension quite a bit and now with the new update on the car you can now for the first time ever preheat the battery of the id4 which is a really nice feature especially if you live in quarter climates because if the battery is cold you cannot get the peak charging levels on this car now in this particular version i'm driving right now the peak charging level is 135 kilowatts which isn't that amazing it really hasn't changed compared to the outgoing model unless you go for the four wheel drive versions of the renewed ID4, then you get a peak charging output of 175 kilowatts. But this particular version that only has the two wheel drive can only charge up to 135. I'm not sure why that is because they basically got the same drivetrain from the ID7, uh, and the ID7 can charge up to 170 kilowatts as well, just like the GTX version of this ID4, which is the four wheel drive version. The GTX also gets a little bit more power. It now gets 340 horsepower and it really needed a power bump as well because this version now has 286 horsepower which is basically the same as the gtx had before because before the gtx has 299 horsepower so almost the same as this new version so they gave the gtx a power bump as well but coming back to the preheat function if you go to the charge menu in the infotainment system and you go to optimize you can see how fast the car can charge at that particular moment but you can also see how fast the car can charge if you would to preheat the battery. And you can also see how long it will take. So for example, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or even longer if I live in a colder climate. And so now there's a button here that says preheat battery. And if I would to push that, the battery will start warming up. And so that's everything you need to know in a nutshell about this renewed ID4. If you like this video, why not consider subscribing? It's free. And don't forget to hit that thumb button. And then I'll see you in the next one.